three athletes, people have inspired us in the Olympics and Paralympics just passed in London. I'm looking forward to chatting to them, but there will be an opportunity for you to do that as well. So get those questions in your head and really tease out what makes these guys and girls tick. So, introducing two Olympians and a Paralympian, Laura Bartlett and Craig Benson and David Smith. Welcome, great to see you. And um, earlier on, we were just having a little chat about the two pieces of bling there, the nice medals. Um, and this young man's looking for one in Rio. So I'm going to start off with the Olympic experience. We think we just get right to that and just tell us how, how it was for you, Laura. It was absolutely amazing. I think being part of the, the Beijing Olympics for me, that was my first Olympic experience and getting exposure to what the Athletes Village is like was unbelievable. But the fact that this was a home Olympics, it was a London Olympics, it was the home crowd, it was going to be something that none of us had ever experienced before. And the show that they'd put on, the Athletes Village, the opening ceremony, the stadiums, the facilities, it was unbelievable. And for hockey especially, we had 16,000 people watching all of our games, which for hockey as a sport was fantastic because we don't usually get that exposure. So the fact that every game we had like an extra man in the crowd kind of cheering us along and wanting us to win was, was unbelievable and it's, a, it's an Olympic Games I'm sure that we'll never forget being a home Olympics. Craig, your first time, what was it, what was it like for you? Yeah, I mean, Meet expectations? Yeah, it was totally new experience for me. I'd never been at like a World Championships or anything. Um, and yeah, the biggest crowd that I'd swam in front of was the trials, um, which was I think 1,500 people or so. And then the yeah, but and then go on to the Olympics, 17,000 people. Um, yeah, it was a totally crazy experience for me, um, and definitely the most fun I've ever had swimming. Um, just loved every moment of it. And that sets you. I mean, obviously Laura's been Beijing before, London second one, so. It kind of sets you up to go to, to Rio, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully um, qualify in four years' time. And um, really, London, I was probably a bit young to be winning medals like these guys. But um, yeah, the whole plan is for Rio. So hopefully four years' time, I'll be uh, sitting with the yep, well, medals. Yep, absolutely. David, Eaton Dorney, I was, I was out there um, at, at the Olympics, didn't get out there at the Paralympics. What was it like? What was that experience for you? Again, like these guys say, it was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. We, we train at Eton Dorney and we're used to one man and his dog and the odd um, jogger. And then <laughs> you turn up there and again, there's 10, 15,000 people there and Union Jack's waving and it sort of really drummed it home to what it was meant to be part of a, a home team and a home games. And it didn't add to the pressure slightly. <laughs> yeah. And the crowd, um, fantastic, great support. Yeah, it was great and the Olympians talked about this wall of noise. You hit this wall of noise in Dorney and I was quite looking forward to it because it blocked out the cocks and we didn't have to listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, and it, it, you hit that noise when you, you needed it. You know, that's when the pain started to hurt and, and certainly that day I said, it, it was like you said about the hockey, you felt like everyone was on the pitch. I felt like every person in that grandstand that day took a stroke with us and that's what we managed us to put two seconds on the Germans. So. And if, uh, I mean, just looking at the footage, just, just a wee question for you there, that feeling in the boat when you crossed the line, just watching the footage there, yeah, it was amazing. Uh, it was painful, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it took a little time to register what was going on. Um, yeah. But yeah, you, I don't think I'll ever feel that feeling again. So it was, it was amazing. Brilliant. We'll come back to the Olympic experience again at some point, but it'd be good to know your background in sport and just what got you there, what you feel about your experiences, which helped you along. Just a wee flavour of that, Laura, would be great. Yeah. Um, I started playing hockey when I was eight years old at school. It was the main sport for girls at my school, but at, at that age I did play a lot of sports. I did athletics and tennis as well, but it came to the point um, where I had to make a decision as to what sport I really wanted to focus on because I couldn't. It was taking up, doing all the kind of different sports was taking up a lot of my time and trying to balance school. I, I, I decided to pick hockey and I loved the fact that it was a team sport as well and you were going to be playing with your friends. And I basically just went through um, 
all my, my school playing sport, uh, hockey and joined a hockey club as well and from there going through all the Scottish age groups from under 16s to under 21s and after playing for Scotland under 21s um, I was picked to, to play for the GB Youth Olympics in Sydney and that gave me exposure again to, to play f to get selected for the GB senior squad for Beijing. So for me, it was quite a quick cycle from starting at school at eight years old and joining a hockey club and going through all the Scotland setup to then getting exposure to the to the GB um, youth and then senior uh, selection. So yeah, a lot of commitment for me from being at school and having to balance my university life as well. I had to take a year out for for being in the participating in the Beijing Olympics so it was very difficult to balance kind of work life as well as wanting to really commit to my sport so that's why it was really lucky for um, the GB squad in particular for London that we centralised for three years prior to the Olympics because in order for us to really compete against the top nations like Holland and Argentina we had to train full time because we wanted to compete for medals. If you think the three years that you trained uh, before London have completely been worth it, all the sacrifices you've made at school and then again having to, to miss kind of exams and take a year out for university, it totally seems worth it when you look down and you see that you've now got an Olympic medal. Yeah, brilliant. And, and it's for, for us, we should have said at the beginning, we'd like to just thank all of you for the, the, the great moments you, you gave us. Any special people along the way that, that, that kind of really helped you? Um, like my parents have always been really supportive with my sport and like dropped me off, picked me up whenever I needed that and then they would both fight over who actually gave me the sporting gene as to why I started my sport. <laughs> but my <laughs> I just don't see anyone. Um, so, but my grandfather actually played um, football for Rangers in Scotland so he likes to claim that he, he's a bit claim to fame for this. And, um, when my mum asked, so what games do you want to, to come and watch at the Olympics? My mum was expecting him to just see one or two games, but he actually ended up coming to every single game and, and moving down to London with him as well. My mum wasn't best pleased, but he just loves <laughs> sport and, and, and being involved. And I think the great thing about being a home Olympics is the fact that, I mean, my grandpa's 80 years old, so he wouldn't have been able to travel on a 15-hour flight to to perhaps Rio if it was going to be in Rio there for 2012. So the fantastic thing was it was a home Olympics. It meant that he could come and watch me play in Olympic Games and watch me win a, win a medal, which was absolutely amazing for me.